Hey guys, even here, so as you all probably heard at this point, Monsters in Pro show happened and this show is basically, it's funny, this show happens before anybody hears that it's going to happen, there is basically no promotion and this is a pro qualifier, actually this is Mr. Olympia qualifier, so who wins goes to Mr. Olympia and it looks like it's not gonna be Song Chul Lee on the left right here, uh, this guy is from uh, South Korea and this show is in south korea and you know he usually wins this show if i remember correctly and he gets his uh, qualification but as you can see on the right we had a comeback of sibusiso cotello surely you remember him being late for the pre-judging at the iron classic brazil they let him do a uh, opposing routine in the finals but he was disqualified and he looked amazing at that show so I was curious when we're gonna see him next because I thought he has a really good chance of winning a pro show and qualifying for the Mr. Olympia. But uh, looking at these photos here, and I'm gonna show you a video in a second, uh, it looks like he's not gonna be not the winner and probably not the runner up, most likely third at this show because the competition in this show is, well, let's say not very tough. Also, because Puerto Rico Pro is happening uh, right now, I mean, the pre judging for. 212 and classic physique has already started but i think tomorrow uh, we're gonna have the men's open so bodybuilders had to choose which show are they gonna compete at and these couple of guys decided to compete here and me personally i'm having the guy on the left his name is mohammed and i'm probably gonna butcher his last name it says nasur on his instagram so guys correct me if i'm wrong i'm probably wrong but I think he's winning this show. He might not be the biggest out of these three guys, the fullest, but he's definitely, by far, the most conditioned. And you can't really see that in this video, but in those high-quality photos, you can clearly see it. Though you can see it here, like, especially in the glutes and the lower lats. Uh, definitely way more shredded than Sibusisu, but... Um, Song Chuli has a really good shape, really good roundness and decent conditioning, but this guy, Muhammad, really came shredded and dry, dry, so even though Song Chuli probably has like more muscle, more roundness, and even though he is from South Korea, I still don't think they're gonna let him win this show, because this guy, Muhammad, really showed up, he came in shredded, peeled, and dry, dry, as British would say, uh, dry as a nun. So he really brought the conditioning and I think it's going to be enough for him to deserve this victory and to go to the Mr. Olympia. I honestly, I think I heard about him before, but he's not exactly the most popular guy and this is not exactly the most popular show. So this is one of the uh, low level pro shows or Mr. Olympia qualification shows that you can win your qualification at. I mean, it being held in South Korea is probably a factor because there are many shows in America or in Europe and there aren't exactly many pro bodybuilders um, out of America or out of Europe. So they probably don't want to travel so far. So usually competition here is not that tough, you know. And uh, I mean, these guys are great. These three guys, top three guys, definitely made a show out of this competition. And uh, Sibu Sisu, I mean, I expected him to be in better shape for his next show. I think he was in better shape at Brazil. I mean, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, look at the glutes here, uh, look at the hamstrings, the quads, also his uh, lower back. You're gonna see all that in a second as soon as I play the video, but he was definitely in better shape at Arnold or the lighting was better. This lighting at this show is not that good and also the quality of the video is not exactly that, uh, that super, but still you can see, you can kind of get the idea, especially compared to this Mohammed guy who came in shredded and exposed the, the conditioning uh, of Sibu Siso and also Sang Chul Lee. Both of these guys, I mean, neither of them brought good conditioning and uh, Mohammed, he came in shredded. I mean, look at the shreds on him. So he definitely deserves to win this show. If he doesn't, then that's gonna be absolutely politics. If Sang Chul Lee wins because he's from South Korea, and I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think the judges would would, would destroy their their names if they gave him the win because Mohammed absolutely won this show. Uh, you can see it clearly. Uh, crazy, crazy conditioning, and uh, yeah, he deserves uh, a Mr. Olympic qualification. I am getting really excited to finally see Hassan Mustafa on that stage bringing insane a level of conditioning he is shredded like this is seriously seriously shredded for a bodybuilder of his size i mean he should not be this dry his separation should not be this deep i mean this is the kind of separation you see on classic guys 
it's really rare to see these massive guys bring this kind of sharpness, uh, these kind of details, deep separation and cuts. Um, you know, uh, people were talking when, when they saw him. Look, look at his jawline as well. His face is absolutely shredded. I mean, this is by far, without a doubt, uh, his best conditioning, uh, without any competition. I mean, nothing else comes close that he ever brought before. And I'm guessing this is not going to be just his best. This is going to be one of the most shredded bodybuilders this year. It, that's what it looks like to me. And this is like a day out. So, I mean, unless he messes it up somehow, which I don't think he's going to do, I think he's going to be even drier and harder on the stage, if that's even possible. I don't know if you guys compete, but if you ever went on a bodybuilding show or you went backstage even, and you saw bodybuilders in their t-shirts, and sometimes you see a bodybuilder looking super full in a t-shirt, those guys usually don't look very good on stage. But the guys who look flat, they are the ones that are shredded, and on that stage, under those heavy lights, they're showing every detail on your body. When you get a pump, when you get a little bit filled up with carbs, when you get dehydrated and everything, I mean, it's not good to be too flat, but if you are just a little bit flat on the flatter side, instead of spilling over a little bit, it's better for you, because you're gonna look shredded, and the guy who looks the most shredded is going to also look the biggest. As long as he has muscle, and Hassan has a ton of muscle, like, he's one of the most massive guys in IBB right now, so this is definitely a great game plan, and I'm really excited, I mean, it's only one day left, and right now I'm predicting something insane. I think we're going to see something ridiculous on that stage. Look at the glutes, look at the hamstrings. Like, this is rare. It's rare that somebody brings this kind of conditioning. I think he's going to be more conditioned than, let's say, Nick Walker. So, I'm really curious to see the final package when everything else clicks, when he's, you know, uh, when he has the color, when, he has, when he's pumped up, when he's dehydrated even more, when he's completely dried out and filled up a little bit. What's that gonna look like? It's going to be insane. And I started the point earlier, a lot of people, when they saw his photos and videos, were saying, we don't know how are his legs looking. I mean, that was true. We didn't see his legs. We didn't see his glutes. But now we can see it. And you can see that this is probably his most shredded body part. And it makes sense. Where you have the most muscle, that's usually the part that's gonna look the driest, the hardest, the fullest. And that is definitely Hassan's... Uh, the best, the strongest body part, it's his legs, for sure. So I'm over here checking out his uh, older photos from his previous shows, and I'm looking at insane muscularity. I mean, look at the size of his arms, of his chest, of the legs. The only weakness that I can find is narrow clavicles, but that's not really that big of a, a problem. I mean, if that is your weakest point, I mean, having narrow clavicles, then you are a lucky man, I mean, <laughs> take a look at Phil Heath, that's his only weakness, everybody has a weakness, and if that's your, your weakest point, narrow clavicles, I mean, <laughs> and it seems to be, in Hassan's case, then you are gonna be a good, good bodybuilder, like, he has mass everywhere, everything looks ridiculous on him, and he also, now, is going to bring conditioning. So, I mean, with time, he can, like, work on uh, fixing his posing and uh, not really showcasing his, his narrow clavicles. Uh, in Fu Arabiat's podcast, he suggested some things, you know, when he's doing uh, front relaxed, he should do it the way Phil Heath does it, with uh, his shoulders rolled forward, uh, like he's doing a most masculine. That was an interesting point, you can check it out in the podcast, but basically there are, there are things that he can tweak and he's gonna look wider in the shoulders and also he can grow his delts more and that kind of stuff, but that's really not big of an issue, really. I'm just really curious to see what he's gonna look like shredded with all this muscle, with this shape. And I mean, I'm positive, he's going to win Puerto Rico Pro tomorrow, and uh, maybe a couple of other shows, so the other guy should be worried, because this guy might be the next top 6 guy, he might be that, because show me weak point, show me what is not super impressive, super massive on his physique, there aren't many body parts that he's lacking at, it was only conditioning, and it seems like he fixed it, hopefully it's going to look impressive as it looked before, so hopefully he's going to look like not flat, hopefully his skin is going to be uh, tight, you know, when you're too flat, your skin can look a little bit loose, and you're gonna look like you're not that conditioned, so hopefully everything will click, he will peak perfectly, and he didn't lose muscle during this uh, this process, 
but I am really optimistic and I think it's going to be an insane package tomorrow. Who I gotta mention, Petar Klancher. I mean, he didn't do that well at California Pro. I thought he might even win because in his Instagram shots he looks uh, like a Mr. Olympia winner, basically. Uh, at Cali Pro, it was his first pro show in uh, six years, I believe. His last time he competed was 2016. So this is basically his comeback. And during those six years, he was vegan, uh, he was off the gear. Uh, I heard he was trying to, to get his uh, wife pregnant. Uh, I don't believe he succeeded. I think he adopted in the end, but that's besides the point. So it was, you know, the six years where he wasn't exactly trying to make progress. So he came back and he definitely looks better than ever. And um, he didn't really do that well at California, but still he was top five. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good result. And the next show is in three weeks. He's going to be doing Mr. Big Evolution Pro Show and, uh, you know, I don't really see him making some major changes in those three weeks uh, and, and winning that kind of a show. I don't. I think he was in good conditioning for California Pro. Maybe he can tighten up a little bit. Maybe he can peak a little bit better, but he looked good. I mean, for what he could have brought, I think he brought like 90-95% of what he can bring. Uh, I think he needs maybe a couple of years of the offseason to grow his quads and maybe his back to improve back a little bit more. But I don't think there is much he can do in these three weeks. Uh, maybe the lineup is going to be a little bit uh, weaker so he can place a little bit higher. But I don't think he can improve much on this this year. But if he keeps improving in the offseason, I'm sure he can make bigger changes and get that Mr. Olympic qualification. Yes. All right, nothing crazy impressive, really, to see here. I mean, just another update of James Collins here. He's posting those quite frequently, but it is very exciting, the fact that we're going to see him back on stage. The last time we saw him was Mr. Olympia, where he failed miserably, and this is going to be his comeback. So he's going to be competing at, I mean, his main goal is Arnold Classic UK, but before that, he's going to do Yamamoto Pro Show, uh, maybe he didn't plan to do that, but he's sponsored by Yamamoto Nutrition, so he's gonna have to do that show. Maybe he won't be in his best sh absolute shape. He's gonna probably tighten up for uh, for Arnold Classic UK. I think the difference is like a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. So we're gonna see him first at Yamamoto, but I am very excited to see him back on stage because this is going to be his redemption. Again, he failed the Mr. Olympia. The package that he brought was not good. He tried too hard to, to, to get as uh, shredded as possible, so he flattened out too much, way too much, and his physique looked horrible. And hopefully now he won't repeat the same mistake, and I don't think he's going to. I don't think there is that much pressure on him when he's doing these, uh, these weaker shows, but hopefully, uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, and hopefully for the Mr. Olympia this year, he's not going to make the same mistake, and he's going to actually represent uh, his maximum potential. I'm a huge fan of, of James, uh, of his personality and his physique, and I think he has much more to show us than he did so far. So I'm really excited to see him back on stage. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, and if you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, and bye-bye.